Hello, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to the Ultimate List. This is a show where um, we get three guys together. I'm not going to say we're experts, historians. I like, to I like to refer to us as the common men, but JR has a problem with that. <laughs> so let's say we're uh, just three common guys with varying degrees of expertise in different situations. You, you make like us sound like we're Randy Page or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, okay. We're good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But we've been discussing, uh, what we do here on this show is we get together, we could each come up with a top 10 of something, and then we try to whittle it down to one single top 10, thus creating the ultimate list. And uh, we've done wrestling in the past, best professional wrestlers, and we've done the best comedies of all time. And today we're going to tackle music. We're going to do the top 10 moments in music history. And this is something I know very little about, so this will be a very good example of... Uh, a common man trying to put a list together. And speaking of common man, I gotta take mm -hmm. the hat off here, and get the old construction hat going. All right, so today we're talking about top 10 moments of music history. Uh, JR, what'd you come up with for this list? He puts that helmet on, he knows I'm not gonna bring up the village people, doesn't he? He knows that, right? Okay, the top 10 moments in music history off my list. At number 10, Michael Jackson moonwalks at Motown 25. Mm. I think it was a historic moment. It really changed Michael Jackson from Jackson 5 into the king of pop and went on from there. At number nine, Cleveland DJ Alan Freed. He coins the term rock and roll. And it's lived since then and now on. At number eight, it gave, uh, gave Don McLean his biggest song ever, The Day the Music Died, back in February 3rd of 1959. The plane accident, the first big plane accident involving um, people in, in the music profession. And it killed, of course, Buddy Holly, uh, the Big Bopper, and uh, what's his name? I can't even think of it right now. It popped off of it. And all I can think of was Lou Diamond Phillips. And that's, that's Richie awful. Valens. There you go, Richie <laughs> Valens. At number seven, to get done with the morbid things, John Lennon is murdered. I thought that was a very big event for people of my generation, of my ilk. And what made it very interesting is how it was found out to the nation, it was actually announced on Monday Night Football by Howard Cosell, because it happened live and he put it out there for people. At number six, the British invasion. Now everybody thinks the Beatles started and ended the British invasion, which is not entirely true. The British invasion was a period throughout the 60s going into the late 60s, very early 70s, of all your biggest groups coming from England and over the, over the pond, as they say. Everything from, you know, the, the Rolling Stones, the Dave Clark Five, Dusty Springfield, to later towards the end of the decade where you had Led Zeppelin, Black Sabbath, The Who. So the British invasion was very important to the music Black industry. Black Sabbath so. was... From really? Manchester. Really? Yes. See, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> At number five, Les Paul creates the electric guitar. Now, Les Paul was very famous for he and his wife, Mary Ford, famous singers. He's still considered one of the best guitar players ever. But back in the day, you had an acoustic guitar. Well, in the 1940s, in 1940, Les Paul created the first solid body electric guitar, which he called the log. Basically, it was a piece of pine that he whittled, put strings on it, put a pickup on it, and played, and it was called the log. He became so prolific with it, Gibson bought it. They bought Les Paul, and of course, now today, anytime you go, to Gibson to buy a guitar, one of their biggest sellers of all time is the Les Paul guitar. So I think that's very important in the history of, of modern music. At number four, Elvis Presley records and signs with Sun Records. Back, back then in the day, back in 1955-56, Sam Phillips of Sun Records was lucky enough to discover this truck driver from Tupelo and sign him to a, to a contract which, of course, he stupidly later on let go, and I think RCA bought him out. But that was the biggest moment in early rock and roll history with Elvis signing with Sun Records. At number three, the iPod. Now, I, I'm, an, I'm an Apple person. I freely admit that, so I call it the iPod. But really, it could be any form of digital music. Music has always been, you know, start off with those thick LPs, and then with the thinner vinyl, and then it went to cassettes, then it went to A-track, then, you know, of course, it went to um, CDs and everything. 
but digital music is really taking music to a whole new area. You said yourself you don't know a lot about music, but everybody you know has some sort of MP3 player now. They take music with them. It has really become part of their lives, not just at home, but they take it to work, they take it in their car, they take it everywhere. And I think digital music and the iPod has done that. Number two for the top ten musical moments of all time, Woodstock. Back in the days, August 15th through the 17th in 69, three days of love, peace, sex, rock, <laughs> mud. It all existed at Wood Woodstock. That was the first one of its time type there. And it really, even to this day, no matter what generation you're talking to, you say Woodstock, Woodstock, that puts a picture in people's heads about music. And finally, at the top of my list, The Beatles on Ed Sullivan. Back in those times, you know, kids like music, they like rock and roll, parents like to say, oh, I hate that music, blah, 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 blah. Well, what legitimized it for everybody and really opened up Pandora's box was the Beatles back in February of 1964. This is what they didn't know is when you say the Beatles and Ed Sullivan, they actually appeared on three consecutive Sundays during that February of 1964. They, they had a deal with, um, with the Beatles, and what they did is they did two songs on each one of those Sundays. They opened the show, they ended the show, and it made history for music and rock and roll. So that's my top ten. Wow, that was pretty good. You had that good research. <laughs> Maybe more than a common I'm, man. I think here. I'm just old. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll give out my top ten here. Now, I started to put together the, my top ten, and uh, a lot of deaths, suicides, that sort of thing started coming up. And I'm like, I'm, I'm wiping out all the deaths, I'm wiping out the suicides, all the morbid stuff. I wanted to put the, the reincarnation of Woodstock on there. Uh, but it, then that turned into riots and everything, so I decided to take it all out and try to make a positive top 10 for uh, moments of music history. So at number 10, I started with the opening of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame building in 1995 in Cleveland, Ohio. Good one. I thought that was a pretty big moment for uh, music. And uh, one I matched you with, uh, the 1940 invention of the electric guitar. See that? You know this stuff. <laughs> <laughs> you can't have it without the electric guitar. At number 8, I had Napster. Because I remember when uh, that happened, and that changed everything. It changed the, the music industry in good and bad ways, I suppose. Number seven, I had uh, another one you had, JR, uh, the Motown celebration when Michael Jackson did the moonwalk for the first time. Changed, uh, uh, I think, I don't know, not just music, but the way people perform and dance. You, know, you got your Justin Timberlakes now and your ushers. That, that whole dancing changed the way people danced on stage. Number six, I have uh, when Nirvana and uh, grunge arrived. I thought it was a big moment that uh, changed the music history. Number five, uh, 1981, I think it was, the birth of MTV, when it didn't matter really what the song was. Now you had to have a video to go along with it. I remember uh, an interview with Tom Petty talking about, I forget which song it was, but uh, he said we couldn't just play it on the radio. You had to make a video or else no one would hear of it anymore. I remember the very first video. Video killed the radio stars mm -hmm. by the Buggles, yeah. Number four, I have when Run DMC teamed with Aerosmith. Uh, it uh, got hip-hop, that was the first hip-hop song to break the top five of the Billboard uh, charts. I think that was a big moment. Number three, uh, you mentioned Ed Sullivan. Oh, I had uh, Elvis instead of the Beatles when uh, they only shot him from the waist up because it was too... Uh, too sexy, I guess, to shoot him, shoot him shooting the, <laughs> swaying the hips back and forth. And number two, I knew the Beatles had to be on here somewhere, but I do not like the Beatles. I always thought people liked the Beatles because other people liked the Beatles. I thought it was just a big thing where it was cool to say you liked the Beatles, but I knew they had to be on here somewhere, so I kind of just uh, gave them a nod by putting the British Invasion in here at number two. And number one uh, moment in music history, I had the original Woodstock. Uh, Somewhere around 400,000 people were there, and to this day, it's still one of the biggest music festivals uh, uh, that ever happened, and uh, I think that was the biggest moment in music history. So there's my list. How about you, Lamont? What are you thinking? Well, I, I, I think this is probably going to be one of the easiest shows we've ever done. <laughs> yeah? I, I think we're kind of on point with a lot of things here, but uh, like you, I, I try to stay away from some negative things, and uh, I wanted to not focus on individuals as well as... as as um, what both of you guys did on some of your lists. So uh, on my number, my number 10 is the rise and fall of disco. Like you said, with grunge, we had, there's a genre in there. And what disco actually did, not that I, I'm in love with the, the genre or anything, 
but music used to be much shorter. Songs used to be much, much shorter. Disco came along and it made it appeal to dance audiences, so they wanted the beat to go longer and it actually lengthened the, um, the, the song and uh, made it more danceable. Saturday Night Fever, um, probably one of the biggest albums on the disco charts, uh, was on there for 120 weeks and goes platinum 15 times. Um, it made, uh, it culturally made music more diverse. You saw more bands of color, more singers, more, more women. Um, people into the mix, so the rise and fall of disco uh, had to be on there. Number nine, country music crosses over. Um, led by Shania Twain, who's come on over, uh, album is the best-selling studio album of any artist of any genre, uh, with 99 weeks on the top 20 album chart, and Garth Brooks, the third best-selling artist of all time, going mainstream, big moment in music. Uh, number eight, Live Aid with uh, concerts at uh, Wembley and Philly almost simultaneously with some various degrees of time difference um, is when uh, music had a heart and raised uh, 283 million dollars for uh, famine relief in Africa through the We Are the World efforts and Do They Know It's Christmas and it was a period in time when music actually gave back and looked beyond themselves to, to do something um, more for the community and the countries. Uh, number seven uh, it was kind of a black eye for the music industry, and Millie Vanilli gives back the Grammy. I don't know if anybody remembers <laughs> Millie Vanilli, but uh, they were a group that lip-synced. Um, the, the producer actually hired some studio musicians and got these models, or these good-looking guys, to actually um, lip-sync the tracks. And um, it was very successful for a while until um, something happened at one of their concerts and it was revealed that they lip-synced, but that was actually after they won the Grammy for Best New Artist. There was a whole controversy associated with that, and they had to give back the Grammy, so I had to mention that. Number six, like you guys, for various reasons, the British Invasion, because it included so many groups from over in England, and they actually crossed over for the period that you said it didn't, wasn't just that 60s. You had to think a, a longer span there. Uh, number five, both of you guys mentioned Woodstock, which is the granddaddy of all modern music festivals. And it was, uh, as you mentioned, a once-in-a-lifetime event. You couldn't repeat as they tried with um, doing it again a second time. It just wasn't the same. Uh, number four, we agreed on Walk This Way with R. Smith and Run DMC becoming a, a huge hit, um, giving a second breath to Aerosmith, who were famous in the 70s and, again, uh, currently relevant since that time, and Run DMC, um, giving rap a crossover appeal to all audience, not just hardcore um, rap fans. Number three, we agreed that MTV and the network and how that changed music and how it was marketed and um, it became kind of a pop culture and the influence that fashion and dance and, and everything that was uh, involved in that um, became relevant and mainstream to a bunch of audiences. Uh, number two, kind of what you guys said about uh, the moonwalk, but I want to go with the whole thriller, the whole concept, yeah. because the album itself had seven top ten uh, singles on it, which is tied with, I think, Janet Jackson and, and some other artists uh, as a record. The video itself changed how MTV programmed and, and marketed itself as far yeah. as videos go. It was the longest video up to that point. Um, um, along with the Moonwalk and the King of Pop title, it, this, that album um, launched a whole bunch of new things as far as Michael Jackson goes and, and pop culture and its lasting effects today. And uh, we, I, we think we all agreed to some degree about Napster and the digital revolution. That's my number one. Because uh, before that, you had record stores. There's no more record stores. Oh, yeah. um, Tower Records is gone. National Record Mart is gone. All of that's gone. You can instantly track the number of units that you move. It gave uh, appeal to independent artists. Independent artists, as you can get online, make your own video, um, get people to see it. So it market, enabled them not to have the money behind them to market themselves. And it just... Um, it took off, as JR said, everybody now has music on their phone or an iPod or something to that degree. So it changed the, the industry entirely. And that's my top ten. All right. Well, there you got uh, the three uh, top ten lists from each of us. We're going to take a break here, and we're going to try to whittle that down to one top ten list. But it sounds like we're getting along this year. <laughs> so it could be a nice time. <laughs> Get the kids. Get the kids for this one. This is going to be a nice family one. I will right, we'll be right back after this on the <laughs> ultimate list. <laughs> 
CUTV always has the action, and now you can too by ordering CUTV programming on DVD. To own your favorite CUTV moments, just send $16.95 in a check payable to SAI, care of CUTV programming order, 250 University Avenue, California, PA, 15419. Order now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the ultimate list. <laughs> Here we got a show where uh, there's three of us trying to come up with a single top ten list of something important. And today we're doing the top ten moments in music history. We each gave our own uh, list so far. Now we're going to try to whittle that down to one list. So there's three things that showed up on all three of our lists. That was Woodstock, the British Invasion, and the Digital Revolution. So those we're not going to talk about anymore. Those are three things we feel belong on the list. Now there were four other things that showed up in varying, various degrees on our list that we need to discuss a little bit. Uh, me and uh, JR talked about Michael Jackson's moonwalk at the Motown 25th celebration. And uh, Lamont mentioned Michael Jackson with um, the Thriller album. And the, thr the album itself and uh, the video uh, for uh, Thriller. So let's discuss that. Uh, JR, um, do you think it should just be the Moonwalk, or do you think the Thriller album made a bigger impact? I'm going to cop out and say I think they both did. So I'm very happy if we just, because I think he was important enough to the music industry just to call it Michael Jackson, the king of pop, and let it go at that. Oh, just give him his own spot. You know, everybody mentioned the Beatles throughout you know, the 80s, even going back to the, the Jackson 5 days. How big was Michael Jackson always? So. Right. Well, not always. It's, I mean, I, I, <laughs> it's pretty vague, though. Pretty, that's a hey, pretty, even, I mean, that even when it was bad, he was in the news. <laughs> but it wasn't for music so much. I that's think true. if we're going to focus on music, I think the moonwalk is the dance. Not that you, know, you can't have dance without music, but the thriller concept, the album, spawned the video, spawned the dance, spawned the, you know, the seven... Look at that. Seven, Is that the uh, performance? Yeah, I guess Look at so. our archive people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the only reason why I didn't get into thrillers again because of the music, because so much of thriller was not just Michael, was also Quincy Jones. So that's why I kinda like you know, that's that's what scared me about that. And then I just try to stay away from albums just as single things, because then you know they get into all kind of arguments about albums which are the best albums and like that. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I I, I, I think just, Michael Jackson should be there. Somewhere. I think it's just I agree. Um, I think it's just a thriller phenomenon. And you had so much going on at one time that it couldn't have been timed out any other time in any other point in music with like the video. That. I have no problem with that. I kind of yeah, like the Michael phenomenon. Jackson, the thriller phenomenon. The thriller phenomenon? I think that's good. <laughs> I like just getting the word phenomenon. Well, I like you know, throwing things back to Courtney's. How the hell you spell phenomenon? So now she's just searching through yeah. dictionaries looking. Yeah, and, and the moonwalk was during, uh, it was the Billy Jean performance, which was on Thriller. On the thriller. Just on thriller. Yeah, so it's right. all part of the phenomenon. Let's make it the thriller phenomenon. I like that. That's good, <laughs> good words. <laughs> all right, so we got the Michael Jackson phenomenon. Um, all right, let's talk about Run DMC. Uh, me and Lamont had Run DMC teaming up with Aerosmith to do the cover of Walk This Way. It was a big deal for uh, hip-hop to be that uh, much in the forefront, especially on MTV and things like that. They just weren't getting a lot of airplay. So I feel uh, uh, it d deserves a spot on there. JR, you didn't have uh, this one on there. Do you remember this moment? Oh, very much so, but it's a single moment, so I didn't think it was that big it, it, when you're talking about all the moments of music history. But again, I always go with the majority rules. But as with all the other things we talked about, I think there was other moments that were much more important. Well, this was like the first hip-hop thing. Hip-hop's got to be on here somewhere. No, I realize that, for example, you know, being able to take a, a different song and use it in a different way, my God almighty, let's, let's, let's upset the director again. It gave Vanilla Ice a whole career by being able to steal <laughs> under pressure and oh, use that as his song. Steal. For, <laughs> I'd say honor. I think there was a court case, wasn't there, about stealing I, and not I paying think the judge didn't go that? his way. Yeah, so... <laughs> But, um, you know, again, to move things along, I have no problem. There's 10 things, and I think we need, our list should always represent different ideas. So. All right, we're putting it on there. Run DMC teams with Aerosmith. Because I believe it's just like our next one you're going to talk about that you and I had on Les Paul creating the electric guitar, and Lamont didn't have that on his list. Well, let's talk about the guitar, yeah. So uh, me and uh, JR had the invention of the guitar. 
Uh, Lamont, you don't think the guitar plays a big role in music? <laughs> I'm not saying that at all. As has been said, there are the list is only can only be ten items long, mm -hmm. and um, I just wanted to bring some other things to the attention. Of course, you know when we think of rock and roll, you think of that, and, and you know you could say the same thing for um, sampling and, and rap and hip hop. Yeah, so the, the instrumentation, and if we're talking about music instrumentation, should be represented somewhere. And even with the, the hip-hop performances now, they're, they're doing live band stuff. It's mm -hmm. not even just two turntables and a microphone anymore. They're up there with a the full band. So and as you see our crack staff out there playing, Les Paul showing him playing a guitar and everything like that, he's just <laughs> very important to music history. So let's put on there the invention of the electric guitar. That leaves one, uh, one item that two of us agreed on, which was MTV showing up. Now, who didn't have MTV? I didn't have it yeah. on my list, and I said I kicked myself, so I say... Oh put it on there because I think MTV was a big moment you know music television was a big moment it changed everything across the board all the different musical genres so again that's my faux pas it didn't get on my list it all should right. be on my list so I say let's put it on there don't let it happen again and we're gonna add <laughs> birth of MTV to the list we got three spots left which has worked out somehow like this on uh, all three of our shows so let's uh, go around and you got one pitch to fill one of those spots what do you got Lamont? I'm thinking uh, Millie Vanilli gives back the Grammy. <laughs> like I said before, the whole concept was a producer got these two guys to, to uh, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> producer got two guys to lip sync for a bunch of studio musicians. And I think the, the point I'm making with this is that um, Grammy or the music industry thought it was legitimate. Mm -hmm. And they gave these two guys the Grammy for best new artist and the whole thing fell apart. So I think music had to look upon itself and say, hey, what are we doing here? We're, we can't celebrate commercial success. We have to get back to the industry and have to get back to, to music if we're going to award these types of things. That's an interesting so, look at it. Yeah, that's my pick. That. I was duped. I loved Millie Millie. I had the record. <laughs> Who wasn't duped? I got it. I got it. I remember the music company wanted me to give my CD back, and they would give me my cash back for it. I said, no, this is going to be collector's items. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I Did bought another one. <laughs> Did they offer to give money? Yeah, really yeah. Columbia or? House and BMG, those those home music uh, services, where they wow. would you would buy, sign up for when something. When does that ever thing? happen? So that's, that's never happened. It's another argument for the big moment. <laughs> I can get on board with that. I've never. Heard, you didn't, yeah, that's that's a good one. That's yeah. a good. One. I'll go with the Millie Vanilli. All right, Jay, what's your pitch? The big moment I'm going to pitch is because I took the Beatles off my list and threw it into the British Invasion, is. TV and music is a big item historically, but specifically the Ed Sullivan Show. There was a day for 20 years that every Sunday night everybody tuned in to Ed Sullivan, and that show blew out so many careers for people. The Beatles, Elvis, the Rolling Stones, the Doors. When you were big back in the early days of rock and roll, you appeared on the Ed Sullivan Show. And I mean, it made a lot of careers and it really legitimized the entire scope of rock and roll. I can get on board with that, too. Uh, we definitely had him on here with uh, Elvis and uh, the Beatles, so why not combine him? Just give him a spot. Give him a spot. Right with that, Lamont? Ed Sullivan? Sure. <laughs> 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 All right. Well, for my pitch, I'm going to have to go with Grunge Arrives on the scene uh, with Nirvana leading that... Uh, that uh... <laughs> How can you do me that for Grunge? You turned it from Millie Vanilla and just turned it back. Where Grunge arrived, it was such a big shift in what we were listening to. Everyone was listening to the hair bands with the guys done up in makeup and stuff. And I think there was even, it might have been an MTV award show or something where uh, Poison maybe was performing. And they were, all, they were all drunk and out of sorts. And they couldn't, they, it was a horrible performance. And then after the commercial break, Nirvana performed. And it was just, you could actually see the, the changing of the guards. And it changed the way the kids were dressing. I know I went out and bought flannel shirts that I never had. Not before. only that, it really did bring back the true nature of having a garage band. I mean, at that point, prior to that, music had become very, you know, uh, produced and everything like that. Yeah. You know, three kids, four kids in their garage couldn't had no hopes of playing that type of music. But alternative music, specifically Nirvana and grunge, really lit people up that they could have garage bands again. And really, at that point, you know, without Nirvana, do we have Green Day? Do we have other groups later on that right. probably start off as garage bands? So. All right, so we're good. We put grunge on there. <laughs> grunge arrives. I'm happy because I think I think Sabu's gonna be fighting up between you two this week to see who he's going, where he's going. <laughs> to give that to the grunge. <laughs> All right, so we got our ten. We go to our ten. 
I think we got our 10. So we got our 10. We're going to take a break. We're going to argue about grunge. And then uh, we're going to come back and put these guys in order. So we'll see you after the break on the ultimate list. You're watching CUTV, California University Television. Hello there, welcome back to The Ultimate List. Today we're discussing the top 10 biggest moments in music history. Earlier in the show we set our, uh, our top 10 list and we came up with 10 items on that list now. And at this point we need to get those in an order and we think we have something for you. So let's go to the list here. At number 10, we thought the Run DMC, Aerosmith um, collaboration for Walk This Way deserved a spot on the list. JR took some convincing, but we got him on there at number 10. Number 9, Lamont uh, talked us into Millie Vanilli with uh, the big uh, Grammy uh, fiasco with uh, them having to give back the Grammy. And uh, record companies having to give money back for the album, which I don't know has happened before or since. Number eight, we went with um, grunge. I uh, fought for this one uh, when Nirvana came on the scene and introduced us to grunge and all the other bands, Pearl Jam, the Stone Temple Pilots, all those guys showed up and changed music and the way people dress. It even affects me to this day. Construction worker. <laughs> I still think it's more disco. <laughs> Number seven, uh, me and JR both said, uh, brought up performances on the Ed Sullivan Show, so we're just going to say number seven is the Ed Sullivan Show because it had so many different acts on there. Uh, it was kind of like the MTV when there wasn't MTV around. Number six, we're going with the 1940 invention of the electric guitar. None of this would be possible without it. Number five, uh, we talked about Michael Jackson a lot, and we decided to call this the Thriller Phenomenon. When Thriller hit the scene, we got the moonwalk out of it, we got uh, a different way of doing music videos, more storytelling than just playing the music to on camera. And, and Vision seven Price. top tens. Vision and seven Price. top tens. Vincent Price, you know, you got to <laughs> And brought Vincent Price back. <laughs> At number four, uh, we're going with MTV. When... Uh, it was no longer just good enough to release an album. You had to uh, do a whole uh, little video along with it to get it seen. At number three, two, and one, we all agreed with these. At number three, we went with Woodstock. And uh, number two, the British Invasion. And number one, the Digital Revolution, where uh, you no longer went out to buy your music. You could just stay home and buy your music. And uh, it put people out of business and changed the music industry forever. All right, <laughs> so the thing we got to discuss now, <laughs> hey, there's a digital revolution. Hey, he had all three. He had Carlos playing at Woodstock oh, really? and the Beatles. And crack staff here. The that's office. crack staff, I'm telling you, man. That's old school iPod, though. That thing weighed about five pounds. That was the first iPod. <laughs> that's a throwback. That was the original iPod. All right, all right we got to talk about the Sabu Award. The Sabu Award, for those that don't know, on our first Ultimate List show, uh, I fought tooth and nail to get Sabu on the top 10 best wrestlers of all time. And uh, maybe he didn't belong. Who's to say if he belonged <laughs> on the list or not? But now it has become an award we give out every week to the, an item on the list that maybe shouldn't be there that someone just fought really hard to get him on there. So there's two of them we're talking about today. Uh, Lamont, I think... Um, <laughs> Sabu should go to the Millie Vanilli debacle, and you think um, the grunge Nirvana mm -hmm. uh, uh, thing I got on there should get the <laughs> Sabu Award. <laughs> now I'm going to say I'll accept the Sabu Award today just because of the talking point you had of the record companies giving money back for an album. So I'm going to accept this Sabu <laughs> Award. It's well deserved. For, uh, well deserved. Grunge, but I think grunge deserves to be on the list. And. Uh, I stand by that decision, as I did with the Sabu decision on the first show. He rides in so. your pocket so nicely. He really does. He can just <laughs> can be part Put of him it. on the hood of your dump truck. But that's it for this uh, week's Ultimate List. Uh, if you have any opinions, which I'm sure you do, check out our Facebook page, the CUTV Facebook page, and chime in on 
what you think of our choices this week. And if you have ideas for uh, any other Ultimate List, just put them on there and we'll check them out and maybe we'll get them into a show here. But thank you for tuning into the Ultimate List and we'll see you next time. <laughs>